Hi, thanks for stopping by Angel Gilding. I'm Alex, and today I'm really excited to show you our new silver antiquing process. Now, I'm so excited because this process is the most flexible of any mirroring process there is. And it's also built on really basic techniques. It gives you unlimited opportunities to create some really creative antique mirrors, and it's a lot of fun. So today we're gonna to be using components from our sheet glass kit, as well as our new silver antiquing kit. I put that here just so you could see what that's all about. But as you know, all of our products are also available individually. And you'll see in our instructions, we've got a lot of different antiquing techniques that you can do. And those are just the start. Those are just some suggestions that we have. Now for today, I've just picked three different techniques that I think really show you some of the different options that you have in the process. But keep in mind, it's really just once you've got the basics of mirroring down, there's a lot of different options that you can really create your own type of techniques. So for our first technique, we're gonna be working with LS gel. And like I said, we're using our sheet glass kit, which means that we're using the pouring silver process. And you can still create beautiful antique mirrors in the spray silver process. A lot of our customers have great success with that. And we have some hints on using the antiquing compounds we have in spray silver, all in our instructions. But for today, we'll just use the pouring. And like I said, LS gel for our first technique. And I've mixed up my solution here. And one of the unique aspects to pouring silver is something that we're going to be taking advantage of today. And that is that pouring silver deposits slower than spray silver. And if you were to just pour it on the glass and leave it be, then it deposits in bridges. So typically, when we're trying to make a perfect mirror, we would tell you to gently rock your tub throughout the five minutes or so that you want the silver to fully deposit. But because we're making an antique mirror today, we're not going to do that. And I'll show you what I mean. I've got here just a piece of six by six glass. I made sure to really clean this properly. You always want to keep in mind in the antiquing process three key things. Cleaning, you always want to clean your glass well so that you can control the antique effects that you're getting. Timing, each one of these anti antiquing effects can change based on the amount of time that you do different steps in the process. So you want to make sure that you take note of that. And then also the front and the back of the mirror. When we're antiquing, we're looking at what's actually the back of the mirror. Right, so what I'm looking at now is the surface that's eventually going to be painted with my mirror backing paint. So after any technique, I want to look at the front to see if it's how I really want it to be or if I might want to change something up. So let's get started. Like I said, six by six glass here. I've already cleaned that really well and I've rinsed it well with my distilled water. So I have my tin for silver here measured up, nice diluted, ready to go for me. Just pour it over my glass. And I'm going to allow that to deposit for 30 seconds. And during this part of the process, you do want to rock your glass. You want a good even deposit of your tin. Now I've had 30 seconds for my tin to deposit on my glass. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it really well. It's always a good idea to make sure you take time to rinse it well. One of the leading causes of issue with mirroring is that the tin isn't rinsed off well enough. So let's take our time in this process. Okay, our glass is really well rinsed, and we'll move on to our silver. I've got my measured out. For my piece of glass, I thought 10 milliliters would be good. So reducer here in one cup. With my silver solution in a separate cup. And then my activator, I'll go ahead and pour in with my silver solution. And then combine the three chemicals. As you can see, not much to that. You don't want to mix it too much because you actually want the action to happen here on your glass. I'm going to pour it onto my surface, start my timer, and just let it sit. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to rock it. I'm just going to watch it, let it develop for about five minutes, and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. We have now given our silver five minutes to deposit. And I can see here that I've got those nice ridges that I was looking for. I'm going to go ahead and rinse this off really well. I'm 
Now, if I wanted to, I could even keep this technique as it is on its own. It's giving me some real faint lines here. And that is, once again, that's just because I didn't rock it. Traditionally with pouring silver, you wanna gently rock it so that the chemicals are flowing evenly over the piece to get a nice even deposit. But today I'm using an antiquing process, so I'm not gonna do that. And I just wanted to note, you see here on the front side that there's some black marks. That's just naturally what happens. The silver slightly deposits on the front. We're gonna clean that up later. I'm not gonna even worry about it now. But I've got my piece rinsed off and the next step is our LS gel. Now I'm just going to mist this on the surface and I can do a heavy coat, I can do a light coat, really up to me, whatever whatever you think is best is what you should do. I do like going kind of heavy there and then I'm going to let that dry. Now if you had a heat gun or you had a hair dryer, something like that, that you could hold over it to let it dry. You could do some really interesting things of amplifying the effect, of kind of making it a bit more intense. Today, I don't have that on hand, so I'm just gonna let it dry. I'm gonna let it sit here for at least a couple minutes, and then I can go ahead and tilt it and let it dry completely. Once that's all dry, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the back with my black mirror backing paint. That's a critical step in any mirroring process. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all painted up. Okay, so for our next technique, we're gonna be using our THR crystals, and we're gonna be using them as the silver is depositing. So I've got here another piece of my six by six inch glass. You know, a side note, this is a really good size of glass to practice on. Um, I recommend practicing each of the techniques that you wanna try on a smaller piece of glass, a sample piece, before you get into a really big piece or your masterpiece. I'm gonna go ahead and apply my tin for silver. And I'm gonna let that sit on the glass for 30 seconds and rock it nice and gently. Now given that tin for silver, 30 seconds to deposit, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that off really well. And a little trick in, in mirroring, something that I found is really helpful, is say you think that you've cleaned your piece really well, one of the ways to know and really be sure that it's nice and clean, other than of course watching the water sheet over it, like I've shown you in our cleaning video, is when you apply the tin for silver, as you're rocking it, if you see that there's any areas where it doesn't seem to want to coat, then that means that area isn't clean, and you really do need to rinse it off, clean it really well, and then go back to the process, because if the tin for silver is not applying, we know our silver is not applying either. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to be doing this antiquing effect within the silver process. So my first step is to combine my silver chemicals and put them on the glass. Once again, 10 milliliters of each is what works for me. Got my reducer, my solution in the other cup here. My activator with my silver solution. Combining them just a little bit. I'm going to pour them on the glass and then I'm going to let them sit like that for 30 seconds and then I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, I've let my silver start to deposit here. I'm going to keep that timer going. I'm not going to rock it. I'm not going to tip it off at all. I'm just going to apply my THR crystals. And at this point, this is what we call a flash silver layer. It's a real thin layer of silver that's deposited. So I'm going to start interrupting the process by sprinkling in some of my THR crystals. Once again, you can add as little or as much as you want. I'm feeling kind of adventurous today, so I'm gonna go pretty aggressive here. And then I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna go my typical five minutes. I'm not gonna rock my glass, similar to how I did with the other technique. I'm just gonna let that sit, do its work. The THR is now interacting with the silver chemicals in a really interesting way, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're set. And we have given our silver five minutes to fully deposit. I'm gonna tip this off, and I can see already I've got a really interesting dramatic effect. You really wanna make sure you take the time in this rinsing to get any of those THR crystals off of the glass. We don't want them to continue to antique our piece. We're happy with where it is. 
And like I said before, we've got to keep in mind that what I'm looking at now is the back of the glass, which looks very interesting, very cool. I want to go ahead though and turn it over to the front of the glass because this is what I'm going to see. And I can see that I did a really dramatic effect that THR really interrupted the deposit of the silver. I've got a pretty speckled appearance here. And it may not be as noticeable right now as I'm looking at it, but I know once I paint the back of this, once it's all dry and it's painted, I'm gonna actually see a good amount of that black mirror backing paint come through. And this is gonna give me a really interesting antique effect. I'm a big fan of this. So let's go ahead and tilt it, let it dry completely. So our last technique today is gonna to be using whiting. And we're gonna be using whiting during the mirroring process, but it functions differently than THR. Now I've got, once again, six by six inch piece of glass, really nicely cleaned and rinsed. I'll go ahead, I'm gonna start with my tin for silver. This part of the process is gonna be the same as it's been. Good coating there, let it deposit for 30 seconds. Okay, we've given our tin for silver 30 seconds to deposit. I'm gonna rinse it off really well. And one of the differences with whiting and THR is that the THR crystals were actually interacting with the silver as it was depositing. And whiting is what we call an inert powder, which means it's not gonna interact with my silver and chemicals. It's actually gonna block them. So now I've got my glass fully tinned. I'm gonna take one of my measuring spoons here and my whiting, and I'm gonna sprinkle it over the glass, keeping in mind, in general, where I sprinkle it, the silver won't be able to deposit quite as well. Okay. That looks pretty good. And now, once again, I'm going to pour my silver chemicals onto my glass. I'm gonna do 10 milliliters once again. Okay, combining the silver solutions. And then I'm gonna pour it over. Now I like to just gently pour it. And what you'll find is that the whiting is going to block the surface in some ways to not really allow the silver to fully deposit as evenly as we would want for a perfect mirror. I'm gonna go ahead and give that five minutes. I am gonna gently rock this. I do wanna get that kind of gentle appearance. I'm, I'm not looking for those lines with this technique. And that's been five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and tip the excess silver off, rinse my glass really, really well. And I can see what's happened here with the whiting is that because that whiting was there, the silver wasn't able to fully coat the piece of glass as smoothly as it typically would for a perfect mirror, which has given me a really nice result. I like how it looks on the back here. Let's turn it to the front. Oh yeah, I really like this. It's almost like it's it's deposited in some mountainous ways that could make a really cool antique effect if you were looking for a landscape or something like that. So there you have it. These are just a sampling of the many antiquing effects that you can achieve when you silver the mirror yourself. As you can see, it's built off of some basics of mirroring. And once you add your own creativity, the options are endless to create some really beautiful antique effects. So if you want to see a video of any of our other effects, you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments below. Check out the website, angelgilding.com, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of all of our future videos. Thanks.